Will you be having any more children? So yeah, there's like multiple questions <laughs> in one. Um, so let's start with the first one. We don't know. We don't know. We've gone back and forth with it. And after Eva was born, it's kind of funny. After Eva was born, I got rid of it oh, so much. I donated stuff. I gave things away to like friends and family. It's hard because I can't imagine like not having any more and that makes me sad to think of her being our last one and something that came up in my mind more recently is that I don't want okay for one her therapists have told us that her having younger siblings would be very beneficial to her and as soon as they said that we just looked at each other and kind of smiled because i think they told us that whenever she wasn't even a year old and we're like ha, ha, funny recently i've had the thought like i don't want eva growing up feeling like we didn't have any more kids because of her because that would make me really sad and now we're sometimes we're thinking like okay it's still like three kids one with special needs is like more than enough to handle other times, yeah, we think maybe it would be good to, to have another one to like, um, yeah, have a bigger yeah. family, have like, that the siblings have more of each other later on. Yeah. And, um, but I don't know, we, we haven't really made a decision. Ever. I was the one that was stressing about it somewhat, so much. Like, okay, Eva is two years old now. I have never not been pregnant whenever our child turned two or already had another baby. I feel like this is something just different for us to not have another child already or at least not be pregnant already again because that's always how it was for us. I don't know. Yeah. We'll wait and see. <laughs> we'll wait and see what happens. Yeah. And with the has having a child with special needs make you question having more? Um especially yeah. after she was born. Like after she was born and like all the feeding tube, like waking up every two hours at night and heart surgery. Yeah. And all you think like, okay, that's not again. No. That's enough. No. But, um, <laughs> now I would say it still has maybe a bit of an impact as you like, okay, we have like one child that needs more attention. Mm -hmm. Does it kind of like count as a fourth one already? <laughs> or, um, yeah. It's just, it's just more things to think about or more things to handle. Again, I know, I don't want to feel like limited. No matter how many kids somebody has, it's it's always a lot of work. And yes, Eva has different needs. But at the same time, if you ask somebody that, because we know people actually that have had a child with special needs and then had other children after that. And talking with them has made us realize more and more that, Each child that you... Yeah, that you'll never regret the children that you had after having a child with special needs. Yeah. They will always be a huge blessing to your family. Yeah, it's a very, very personal decision at the yeah. at the end. Yeah. And um, like we said, there, there are lots of like opportunities with having another child. Like, yeah, having a younger child. Mm -hmm. um, like there means, are lots of benefits. Yeah, to yeah. It. it means having yeah. having another sibling for. For your child with special needs maybe yeah especially if and you think for your about, other children and you, and too children if you have other yeah. children yeah but then whenever you think of it it gets yeah. overwhelming because you're like oh we have so much yeah. on our plate right now but i do notice how much landon and jeremy like they're getting older and they're helping so much even with eva and mm -hmm. i think that it would be cool for her to have a younger sibling mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll see we'll see what happens yeah. Yeah. cut <laughs> What kind of cut? <laughs> <laughs> Don't plan anything without, without discussing it with me first. <laughs> How old are your kids? They are all so precious. I love your videos. So our oldest son, Landon, is seven. Jeremy is five and Eva just turned two. What do you wish you knew about Down syndrome and what would you say to someone that just found out this news? One thing that I wish that I knew before was that things aren't as different as I expected them to be. I had this vision of what Down syndrome would be like and it's a lot more easygoing almost than I thought. When we first found out we had like 
no clue about it. We like yeah. I know. We weren't educated at yeah. all. Yeah. Um <clears throat> first they, they call you in for the ultra not the ultrasound. Yeah, ultrasound. Mm -hmm. For the results and um they make it sound like, oh man, your child might have one of the worst things you can ever imagine. Your life is basically over. Yeah. How horrible life is gonna be for this child that you're bringing mm. into the world. This burden that it's gonna be yeah. on your life and your family and nothing will ever be the same. Like mm. that's just how they make you feel. Yeah. And we didn't really feed into that completely. Like we yeah. were concerned and yeah. we, did listen to some of the things that they had to say and everything yeah. and it it made us think about more things but at first we also were like oh no like must be wrong the ultrasound must be wrong like we can't have a baby with down syndrome that that probably won't be us but we got your blood work done mm -hmm. and we were like going to the lab together and we were joking and yeah like, and all know, these like... all these other um people that were sitting in the waiting room mm -hmm. looked so sad and depressed and we were sitting there like joking and yeah, uh... i don't know it was just it was just another appointment and yeah. we were just gonna go get lunch after that and yeah. do whatever yeah. and all so there were people that were crying and we're just looking around and i think we even said to each other like are we the happiest ones in here right now yeah because yeah I'm like, this it feels like such a sad place yeah. and then when we got like the final like the final news when they're like after the blood work they were like yeah um so yeah it is down syndrome 99 percent sure and um <clears throat> i don't know they made it look very bleak and i know life is over as you know it and um, are you sure you don't want to have an abortion are you sure mm -hmm. you want to go through with it at that point i would have loved to know i know like a family with down syndrome like that someone oh. that we would have that we would have met someone or seen someone 100 percent. if yeah. they would have had a family sitting in there with a child that had down syndrome being able to just tell you this is what you're in for yeah. these are the hard things but these are the wonderful things I don't know. I feel yeah. like people would leave there so much more positive and uplifted. Yeah. And I don't like that it's such a sad, dark, even whenever the, like the counselor walks in, she has her paperwork and she sits down and she's like, <sighs> okay guys. Like she's so mm -hmm. just depressing. No wonder people leave there crying. Like it was, that's not how it should be. I just yeah. wish that they would change things. I would love yeah. to sit there in one of the rooms and bring Eva in and yeah. talk with a couple because I feel like they just need to be properly educated. And that's mm -hmm. another thing. I don't blame people that are worried and devastated and crying because they just don't know. And for the second part of the question, like, what would you say to someone that just found out about this news? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is not necessarily like an, an easy news and things are going to be different and you're going to have challenges and I know like you don't wish on anyone to have to go through like feeding tube and heart no, surgery and no. with different like different children with Down syndrome have have different complications and yeah there can be lots of complications you can I know like I know like leukemia is one of the things that is more mm -hmm. likely with kids with Down syndrome so there, there's mm -hmm. lots of things to that you might have challenges or you will have challenges that come along the way but um, it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay and at the same time you're gonna have so much so much joy like so much i don't know happiness that yeah it's gonna be it cancels out all yeah. the fear yeah for sure how has eva been adjusting to her ankle braces um i would say fairly well i have to admit i've been kind of slacking on them because it's summer and I don't really want to put shoes on her a lot of the time. I just have her bare feet because um, she's just so happy bare feet. Yeah. When she is wearing them, she's fine with them. There's a few times that we've noticed she's like tries to take her shoes off and, um, and take them off. But I don't know. She doesn't really fuss with them or anything. She yeah. seems fine whenever they're on. So she's yeah. been adjusting fine. But yeah, I do need to put them on her more. Yeah. Let me rephrase the question. How <laughs> has your mother been adjusting to her ankle braces? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. They're, it's fine. I just don't always want to put them on her because it's just more comfortable. Mm -hmm. In the fall, I'll put them on her more. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Would you consider doing more day in the lifestyle videos? I would love to see more of those and how you balance motherhood with three kids and one with special needs. Um, I totally could do that. It's 
something that i don't know i never really thought of i do like to hear feedback of like what you guys want to see so i'm totally happy doing a, some day in the life i think those are the most like easy going videos i feel like right like it's a lot of work to carry your camera around to whatever you're doing in the day but at the same time i know those are the videos that i love watching the most on youtube because i feel like i can relate to them um and i don't know it's just fun so i would for sure film some of those too this question is for ben most fathers have a soft spot for their little girls do you feel like that is more intense for you because she has down syndrome do you let more things slide and are more sensitive or do you expect the same out of her that you do your sons? Just curious. Thanks. Mm, yeah, I think I, um, I can't really compare um, a little girl versus a little girl with Down syndrome because I only have half Eva. Um, she gets away with way more things than the boys. <laughs> um, it is partially because of me. It is partially... <laughs> Yeah. Because um, I think Sarah really has even more of a soft, soft spot than I for for her. And so if I want to, I don't know, <laughs> have more discipline with her. Um, yeah, I do have a soft spot for her. Especially because I feel like she can't really communicate with us, right? Like she can't tell us like if there's something wrong or something hurts or something. And so I feel like if she's reacting in a way, I'm like, oh, I don't want to discipline her for that or be hard on her for that because maybe she doesn't understand. And I can be a little bit softer, but I sometimes forget like, okay, she's a two year old. She has her own free will and she is going to express how she feels even <laughs> if it's not always the nicest way and that kids are kids and sometimes they just need a little you know guidance direction. and yeah. direction <laughs> so i can sometimes like get in the way of that a little bit i try yeah. not to yeah. um so i for sure have a bigger soft spot than you yeah, do i think so next question is do you have a supportive community around you are you able to get together with other families that have kids with down syndrome i think that having the um like down syndrome like facebook group has been really great because you can go there you can ask any questions that you have and then you'll have like 20 people respond to you like that are other parents that are dealing with the same things or they're there to give advice and it's just really nice to have that community of people but as far as like getting together with other families that have kids with down syndrome that's something that we are slacking on we haven't actually made the effort to go out because they there's they have plenty of meetups like where they have all these like families that go like to the pool or something or um they have, like they weekly have, or bi-weekly yeah groups like and, events and yeah. things like that and um we haven't gone to any of them which is something that i do want to change uh, get better connected with people um but yeah we do have i think we mentioned this like some uh families in our neighborhood that we would see especially because our kids go to the same school so we would see them um, and there was a few times where i like got together with one of them or something yeah. but um not on a regular basis and not as much as we would like to yeah that's yeah, actually really cool like landon's classmate has down yeah. syndrome so they're yeah. like together in the same class and i don't know it's kind of cool and his mom was the first one that I actually talked to whenever I was pregnant with Eva and I just found out about everything. She came up to me at the school because I was talking with someone else and I guess she said like, oh, I need to, um, I need to introduce you to Annette because she's, you know, so amazing and you're going to love her and you're going to learn so much from her. And this mom was right. I've learned so much from her and she's just somebody that I really look up to and admire and I can always go to her and ask her anything and she can just tell me their experience and what worked for them and it's just really great so I do feel like we have an amazing community here in the area that we live in it's yeah. incredible yeah. I noticed from your videos that your husband has an accent where is he from I am from from Germany originally I moved here yeah, we were married for 10 years. Yeah. So um, I moved here just over 10 years ago, 10 and a half years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm from like Freiburg in Germany, southwestern Germany. What is one of Eva's favorite things that makes her happiest? Music. 
like, Barney. Barney. Um, I never really put it on that much for the boys, or maybe I did once or twice to like see how they would like it, but they were never a big fan yeah. of it. But Eva's obsessed with Barney. Sometimes we would try to put something else on for her, like Daniel Tiger or something like that, but she's just not having it. You did Curious George, and she liked Curious George, but she's just obsessed with Barney. So I would say that makes her the happiest. Or if you sing songs with her, she loves that too. Yeah. She, that's like her favorite thing. Yeah. Do you find that kids with Down syndrome have more compassion than other kids? That's a good question. And again, it's hard to tell. She's yeah. like two, two years old. Yeah, and it um, says like, like not specifically Eva, but yeah. just like kids with Down syndrome have more compassion. We can only kind of give our experience with Eva and our boys and compare that way really. With other kids, I think they in general, um, like Eva for example loves to, loves to hug Anna. They're like, maybe She'll more... hug a stranger. Yeah. Like she'll just like reach her arms out and, and go to yeah. this complete stranger. The boys were not like that yeah, at yeah. all. So in that way, maybe more, more compassionate, but like, yeah. if someone is like sad or crying, it, I don't know, sometimes when someone is crying, she's gets scared of it. Yeah. She doesn't like to see people cry, but she's then That's more crying true. herself. She's very sensitive to people's emotions. And that might just be a girl thing. I don't know if that's related to Down syndrome or not. That's always what like the articles say and stuff that they that they have more like compassion and more mm -hmm. love to give people mm -hmm. or more like they're more open. They in see that way. more the good, they're more positive, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Twenty one. <laughs> Again, are, I knew we were going to get this question multiple times, honey. Yeah. Are you planning on having any more children? Are you scared of possibly having another child with Down syndrome? For sure, not scared about having another child. I actually, we had this discussion one time that I would actually like to have more kids with Down syndrome. So that's not something that I'm scared of personally. Yeah. And yeah, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm scared of it. And I'm like also, I don't know, for me, just like the logical part, like, it's so unlikely that it's going to happen again. You're not going to win the lottery twice in a row. So um, yeah. it's not something that's fully on my mind that I would think like, oh man, maybe it's going to be Down syndrome again. More like the, the thought of like heart surgery or like heart things like that to go through. Mm -hmm. um, that would be more maybe of a worry than like... Yeah, like I uh, remember saying like if we would have an ultrasound and they would say we suspect Down syndrome, I would be actually like excited and happy, mm -hmm. totally happy. Um, the only thing I would worry about is if that child has a heart condition and going through surgery again, like that would just terrify me. And yes, we've been through it once, but that would be really hard. Are you planning on having any more children? I think we answered that yeah. <laughs> part of the yeah. question already. We don't know yet. We'll see. This is a really good question. How did your family and friends react when you told them your baby would have Down syndrome? Mm -hmm. It was mixed. The ones that were aware of Down syndrome or had a child with Down syndrome or knew yeah. someone with Down syndrome. Yeah. They were a lot more positive overall than um, people that didn't have much connection with um, with Down syndrome. And, My, yeah. Sorry. And again, I don't blame people for their reaction either. Like if you tell someone and they start crying, I don't know, I don't blame people for that because that's how they're feeling and they're allowed to feel how they feel. And I think that some people just don't really know how to respond to that whenever you say something like that. I know, um, like thinking back, when my cousin's wife had an ultrasound and they suspected Down syndrome, I remember when she told me and I started crying. I don't know, it was just a reaction. I think that you're just, you're scared and worried for something being different, I guess, right? Or mm -hmm. like um, not what they expected. That was also be... before you knew what Down syndrome was about. Right, yeah, yeah totally. So I yeah. don't blame people that have that reaction or wish that they reacted differently at all. Um, but again, we did have mixed responses to it. And even my parents, um, I know they won't mind me sharing, we've talked about this before. In the beginning, when we first told them, they, I think my mom cried about it and she was worried for me and of course for her grandbaby and, and my dad was a little more quiet about it. And then they had also mentioned to me that they were praying that she didn't have it. And 
they had said like we'll, we'll pray to like the very last day that she's born you know because they did say it was like a 98 percent chance and so they said, we'll pray about this, that like she they won't were, have it. They were in denial a bit, I think, too. I think like, so. Yeah, I think that that's like pretty yeah. common yeah. for some people. Yeah. And then we had people that didn't know anyone personally in their life that had Down syndrome or have any relation to it. But they're like, oh, I follow this family blogger and um, they have a child with Down syndrome and she's so cute. Like, oh my goodness. Like your baby's gonna be so cute and it's gonna be so great. And I remember we went to brunch with some friends of ours and when we told them that, you know, about the appointment and that this is what they expect, um, they just said, oh, well, you know, like it's gonna be great and like that's still so exciting and, and they were so positive. And so I think it was mixed. There were some that were crying and sad and then there were others that were just like, you know what? That's gonna be awesome and really like positive and yeah, so yeah. yeah. How long have you been married? Just over ten years now. A long ten years. I know. <laughs> long time of suffering. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. I am not editing that out. <laughs> How do you make time for each other with three kids? My husband and I had our first child four months ago, and I feel like we never get time together anymore. <laughs> another good question yeah. these are all good questions yeah in that time frame when they're like yeah three to six months maybe 12 up to 12 months it is really hard oh. because you're sleep deprived you're exhausted mm. and you're just in such high demand all the time especially if you're breastfeeding and I feel like one of the things that worked well for us is once the kids are in bed to like sit down play cards or something that's one thing we love to do watch a movie or something yeah. Or go for a walk with the baby in a stroller. Oh, or yeah. Like that. And now now that they're older, it's been easier. Like, I know, we, I know, we try to, like, once a month at least that we go out, like, in the evening. We have someone to watch the kids. Like, it's so important to put your relationship first. And I know as parents, like, you always seem to put your kids first with everything. But your relationship overall is the most important thing. And you have to invest time in that. Like, every season of life is different and can offer different things but it, so it's not always possible to have so much time together whenever you have a newborn baby or whatever the case is but um just making that time and putting that effort in even like i don't know sometimes we'll just like message each other throughout the day because it just feel or like you'll call me sometimes on your way home from work and we'll just talk on the phone but yeah you have to i think overall schedule the time more you can't be as spontaneous anymore that's true. Yeah. Like there's been times that we said like, okay, this Thursday night when the kids go to bed, we're going to sit outside, chat, we're going to start reading this book together or, oh, like I got this new card game or whatever. Like we should try this out. Sometimes even like we will wait to eat dinner until the kids are in bed so we can have sometimes. a date sometimes, yeah. not often, yeah. but like we'll put the kids to bed and then we make our food and then we can sit and eat a hot meal and talk and there's no interruptions and that's been so nice to have yeah. were you always positive when you heard of eva's diagnosis or did you grieve about it too thanks for answering um i think we both went through a few different things so whenever we first found out about everything i cried a lot about it um i was pretty shocked actually and then again, not knowing what to expect. And so I cried after the first like few hours of knowing I was like, okay, like smarten up. It's going to be fine. We got this. It's good. And then I just had like my strong face on and just continued on. Right. Like, I feel yeah. like after that, I didn't really have many days where I was feeling yeah. down or I didn't have like a depression about it. I had a good cry and then I was like, okay, it's going to be fine. We're going to handle this. It's all good and let's just yeah continue on and for me i don't actually remember in detail how i felt i don't know before birth i was more worried after birth there was a time when you said to me like i'm almost gonna hold on to that hope until the very do you remember saying that? I, I know yeah. until the very yeah. end like yeah. so it's not that you were grieving, but you no. you maybe ha not had denial, but you were you had that little always had bit a little of bit hope. of hope, the the one or two percent chance that it wasn't Down syndrome. Yeah, and yeah, and I remember when I first saw Eva when she was first born, 
that was kind of like my my first glance at her to check if she has down syndrome or not and then like okay she has you're like okay like, yeah. Yeah. yeah i think there's always a time of grief whenever you hear news that's not what you expect and you have to allow yourself to have that time to work through it on your own timing ours was pretty short-lived mm -hmm. i don't know yeah. like we we were still like happy and excited about mm -hmm. having a new baby and mm -hmm. being excited to meet our daughter the fact that we we're having a little girl was so special yeah. and exciting and actually like a i don't know quick story time looking back now a kind of funny part of like finding out about it we first had like the ultrasound results they called us in they said okay um get some blood work done we did that and then we went on vacation um mm -hmm. was kind of like with with the boys we went to to florida then one day i was like okay i'm going to i'm going to the beach i'm going for a swim it was a bit wavy outside and i want to jump into the waves <laughs> and just at that moment <laughs> I get, we get the phone call from the hospital, from the genetic counselor telling us everything, yes, that the results came back positive, that 98% um, chance of Down syndrome. And during that phone call, I was looking out into the ocean and I saw a fin sticking out, like a, a fin that looked for me like a shark fin. And I'm like, oh man, that phone call just saved my life because if I would have been out of there, I, um, I would have gotten eaten by I would have gotten by a shark. And, um... But as it turns out later, uh, mm, I went to the funny. hotel desk and, and said to the man, I saw a shark, I saw a shark. And he's like, did the fin go in and out of the water or did it stay out? I'm like, oh, it went in and out. And he's like, oh, then it's a dolphin, not a shark. And so, I know. But, <laughs> but in you my were mind, so startled. Yes. Like, you were so worked up over yeah, that, I remember. Yeah. And you're just like, this phone call saved my life. Like, something great yeah. has to come out of this. Because, yeah, yeah, like, it's yeah. just so meant to So, in my mind, be... that phone call, that diagnosis <laughs> saved my life. Yeah. The last question, last yeah. and final question. What yeah. do you like doing for fun as a family? We love like cottage life. We love going for bike rides. Going for walks. We love going for walks like hikes. We've put even like the like ergo carrier a few times or even taken the stroller with us like yeah. on trails and stuff. So in winter we have like these, the these skis. skis. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we love that. I love going to the pool actually. Like we've done the beach and stuff, but I think our favorite is the pool i don't know yeah. the boys love um swimming we love like just hanging out at home as much as we love to go out we're home bodies a little bit too and yeah. we like to play games with the kids build blocks do legos yeah. i don't know that kind of stuff yeah i would say yeah. you can just, see the lego right over there yeah i know it's all over our house yeah. it's taken <laughs> over our house so that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for sending us those questions. We've really had fun sitting here and answering them for you. If you guys have any more questions, you can always leave them in the comment section below and then below, <laughs> down there. And we can always sit down in the future and film another video if we get enough questions. Thank you for clicking on this video and spending time with us. And we hope to see you in the next one. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you another day. <laughs> there you go. Bye.